Hey guys, welcome back. If you've been keeping up with the X231 restoration videos, you'll remember the last one I did, I believe it was part 16. I talked about some of the failures that happened back here, the damage that was done to this rear end casting and some of the repairs that had already been performed to it. So now it's time to complete those repairs. There's a lot of machining to do in the back end of this thing. Mainly in this area of the rear end housing where the live power shaft bearing bore is. I had mentioned in an earlier video how this was extremely thin on this side, it had cracked out and the bearings had spun back here and scored the bore. So they went ahead and uh, repaired a lot of that damage and then added a lot of material to this side of the bore to try and build it back out. So now we have to remachine the bore and get this material milled out here to provide clearance for the belt pulley drive gear where it's gonna ride in this area. Okay, so I have some of these components just kind of loosely mocked up in here to give you an idea uh, what we have to accomplish to make all this stuff work. So I've got the live power shaft placed in the transmission. It's driven off the crankshaft of the engine via these splines. And it runs through the transmission and through the rear end just like a production 445. I've also got the live power PTO and belt pulley clutch drum loosely placed on the live power shaft. This drum has some gears on the back end of it. This straight cut gear drives the PTO shaft. This beveled gear drives the belt pulley. Again, just like a production 445 tractor would. And with that clutch drum slid back out of the way, you can get a little better view of the gear teeth for the belt pulley drive and how they are already up against this new material that was added when we had this rear end casting repaired. And the reason this old, this bearing bore had cracked out the way it did was because the Minneapolis Million engineers had to grind virtually all of this um, casting boss out of the way in order to get this drive gear for the belt pulley drive in far enough to be in proper mesh with the gear on the back of the clutch drum. And you can see here, the belt pulley unit is nowhere near being up against the rear end casting yet. And the gear teeth are already starting to hit the inside of this boss. So. They did a really good job kind of building out this bearing bore to try and strengthen it again, but the problem is we're still going to have to mill a considerable amount of that material back out to get all these gears back in mesh again. So now that I've explained everything about the belt pulley drive gear clearance issues, the original thin bearing bore that caused it to crack out, and the repairs that have been made, plus the subsequent machining that's going to have to be done to clearance everything again, the first part of this process is going to be returning this back bearing bore to the proper diameter to accept the, uh, the bearings here that go on the back of the live power shaft and the sleeve that they ride in. And to do that, it's going to have to be line bored to keep everything lined up with the center of the opening of the bell housing way up here at the front of the transmission. So everything's going to have to be kept perfectly in line all the way through to the center of this rear bearing bore to make sure everything is aligned properly and works the way it should. So here's the boring bar we're going to begin using. It's several feet long and is one inch in diameter. And I like the length of it because it's plenty long to go through the rear end housing and far enough up into the transmission housing to be able to get a good measurement on each end and a good verification of everything being on center. And to center the boring bar, in those two housings, we're going to use these two pieces. So this is the first of those two pieces I just mentioned we're going to use to center that boring bar into the housings here. And this happens to be the adjustment nut for the upper transmission shaft or the sliding gear shaft as Minneapolis Moline calls it. It threads into this threaded bore right here in the transmission and actually it's what sets the end play adjustment of the bearings of that upper transmission shaft. Now it's not supposed to have this keyed hub in the center. That's something that we turned out on the lathe to be a light press fit into the unthreaded center hole in this nut and it just happens to be a perfect one inch diameter on the inside which is an excellent fit on the one inch diameter boring bar that we're going to start with. Now we go to the second of the two pieces. This is what's going to align the boring bar at the back end of the rear end housing. This piece happens to be an adapter plate for a Minneapolis Moline hydraulic pump and it also has a perfect one inch diameter borehole going right through the middle of it that is centered around 
this raised shouldered portion that fits perfectly into this uh, back bore of the rear end casting. So when this hydraulic pump is placed up against the back of the rear end casting here, that raised shouldered portion centers the pump adapter perfectly on the center line of that live power shaft bore that goes through both of these pieces. And the boring bar will be centered in this one inch diameter hole that's machined right in the middle of it. So those two pieces should hold that bar in position pretty well. Okay, so I've got the hydraulic pump adapter plate aligned, bolted down, and it is holding the boring bar in position at the back end. And the transmission sliding gear shaft bearing adjustment nut is threaded into its bore with the collar that's holding the boring bar in alignment at the front end. And it's a really nice fit, moves freely, does not bind, yet there is no free play. And just to double verify that I have everything where it needs to be, I've taken a micrometer and I've double checked that the front end of the boring bar is centered within this machined front opening of the transmission housing. So that pretty much proves everything is right on the axis that it needs to be. All the boards will be in line and I can start building my brackets and bearings and drive feed mechanism to actually um, drive the boring bar and start the machine process on this bearing bore in the back end here. So now that I've got my boring bar centered and being temporarily held in position by those two pieces, we're going to come over here and start talking about these. Now these are the pieces I built specifically for this rear end housing to be a more permanent holding fixture for that boring bar and also to provide a means of driving it when we do the machining process. It kind of goes together like a puzzle, but we're going to start with this piece right here. Okay, we're back at the tractor rear end, and like I said earlier, this is the first piece that's going to go in to more permanently locate this boring bar for the machining process. It's a piece of 6 inch steel channel with heavy angle bolted to the top end of it and it has a self-aligning bearing placed in it, which means the center bearing inside this plate will oscillate a bit to help it align with whatever it's supposed to hold. And I've got it being held in by four 3 8 diameter bolts on 7 16 diameter holes. So that further gives it a little bit more room to center itself before it's tightened down. So to get this piece put in the rear end, first thing I'm gonna do is get the boring bar slid back out of the way. Then the whole piece is just dropped down in from the top and it's made to utilize two of these uh, top cover plate holes that were already in the rear end housing. So I'll just put a couple 3 8 bolts in these real quick, get them finger tight and we'll go on to the next piece. Next up is this piece of 5 8 threaded rod with these two alignment cups that I machined out on the lathe and all of these nuts and washers. And what this piece is going to do, it's going to act as a stiffening brace for the bottom end of this piece of 6 inch channel where it goes down into the rear end. And these alignment cups are turned out to fit in this PTO shaft bearing bore and allow that threaded rod to go all the way in into that small hole that goes through that six inch channel way on the inside of the rear end here and that should keep the bottom end of this um, stiffened up a bit so that it won't be flexing around so much if there gets to be some loads applied to these brackets. So I'll put this piece in now. So first this disc will be placed into the PTO shaft bearing bore on the inside of the housing and then the threaded rod can go in allowing this disc at the rear to hold the whole thing in position. Okay, with this lower stiffening rod being held in place in the PTO housing, by those uh, discs that I turned out on the lathe. And with a nut and washer on each side of that bore, 
it holds that rod pretty solid in the bottom of the casting here as well as a nut and washer on each side of the six inch channel with everything tightened in that's going to hold that piece pretty well in position and keep any kind of rock or twist motion out of it so we'll continue building from here next up are these two pieces of heavy angle with these three quarter inch bolts these pieces were cut and drilled to mount on top of the rear end housing utilizing the four attachment points for the three point lift assembly that's going to continue my bracing going to the rear so that I can add the other six inch channel with the self aligning bearing at the back to provide another good attachment point for that boring bar. So let's get those pieces put on now. Okay, so both of the upper bracket pieces are on, everything's tightened in, and I also ran a half inch bolt with channel wedges through each side of the top of this um, six inch piece of channel just to further tie everything together and make it all a little more solid. So now we have these open holes here and here, plus our stiffening rod still sticking out at the bottom. That is all to accommodate this piece. This piece will bolt into those two top support pieces up here with these half inch bolts and these channel wedges again it is uh, drilled with this um, self-aligning bearing in there with excess play in the bolt holes to allow it to be centered even further to the existing position of the boring bar and then this hole at the bottom will accept this 5 8 threaded rod to stiffen that piece at the bottom as well so I'll get that one put into get it bolted at the top first and now down here at the bottom place the last nut and washer for the stiffening rod I'll tighten those in tighten these down and the main frame should be completed Now that the boring bar bracketry and bearings are all installed, tightened down, everything has been squared, supported, braced, and is all in line, I've got the boring bar slid back through the two temporary holding pieces that I put in to start with to locate it. Now that these pieces are still locating the bar on its proper axis, all I have to do is tighten down the nuts and bolts for my self-aligning bearings withdraw the boring bar and then I can get my two temporary alignment pieces out of the way and essentially hand off full duty to the permanent frame and brackets that I just built. Okay the temporary alignment pieces have been removed the boring bar has been placed back in the bearings everything goes in and out nice spins nice works really smooth so the next step is to get my drive and feed mechanism bolted on. This is just an electric motor with a gear reduction unit powers the drive shaft. It's on some repurposed roller stands that slide back and forth on these two pieces of steel track and is advanced or withdrawn via this simple hand crank screw mechanism. So I'll get this attached to the front or sorry to the bottom of that six inch piece of channel up there and then the back is just going to stand up on those jack stands. And here is the whole boring bar, drive motor, and feed rail assembly fully installed. Like I said before, the rails just bolt to the bottom of that six inch channel. And I've got the drive shaft hooked up to the boring bar. And as I said earlier, the motor is advanced on down the track or withdrawn just by turning that hand crank one direction or the other really pretty simple and thanks to the gear reduction gearbox on the front 
it spins at about 89 rpm so it should be a pretty good speed for turning the cutter bits inside this bore to do the machining so that's the full rundown on the boring bar and the drive and feed mechanism that we put together to do the machining in the back end of this rear end to get that bearing bore back in shape it was a whole lot of work. Uh, what little free time I did have the last week and a half pretty much went into getting all these pieces cut and drilled and fitted um, and getting everything tied in with that motor and that track system and everything. But I think we have a workable setup now and we're right at the point where we're ready to start putting cutter bits on the boring bar and starting to make chips. So, And we have the production 445 rear end here as a guide and you can see there's a lot of material you know that was milled away even on the production rear ends to make clearance for that belt pulley gear and drive mechanism so at least we have this one kind of to uh, use as a pattern and try and get the prototype fixed up a little bit more like the production piece was so guys as always I thank you for watching uh, if you like what you're seeing hit the like button down below please subscribe to the channel I appreciate every bit of that leave comments let me know what you're thinking in the meantime we'll catch you later